pray. Your God. family it's time to pray and in our evening time we have one focus one thought that we want to drive in our hearts and as and live as a mantra for our lives don't stop praying there's a text i want to bring your attention to on this evening a real familiar passage colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 13 or 14 and then we'll make a couple of points and do our uh, spend some time talking to god watch what the text says for this reason also since the day we heard it, heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may walk worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Paul does a marvelous job in this passage reminding us of some of the important reasons why we continue to give God glory, give God praise, but more importantly, in our emphasis, while we continue to pray, there are at least three things that we can grab out of this passage as a at passage as a reminder why we should never stop praying. Don't stop praying because number one, Paul reminds us it is an appropriate response to our problems. He makes the statement at verse number nine, for this cause, since the day we heard of it. Now notice what's going on in the backdrop of the text, Epaphras, who was the minister to that church, is bringing to Paul all of the problems that are going on in the city. Everything that was going on in Colossae, how people's minds have been changed, how teaching has become a prominent, false teaching has become a prominent thing, how the church was dealing with the throes of all this stuff happening at the right time. Really familiar with what we're going through in the sense that everyone will go through a season. Everyone will deal with some issues. Every one of us will have problems. But Paul's posture was, in the day I heard of it, I didn't stop praying for you. Did you catch that? The emphasis then for us is that the appropriate response to any season that you're in is to go to God in prayer. Paul said, when I heard, I prayed. Why? Because when I pray, God hears. That's your emphasis. When you hear, you ought to pray. Why? Because when you pray, know that God hears you. Psalm 120. Put these in your notes. Psalm 120 and verse number one. God, pray. when you go to God in prayer, he hears you. Psalm 102 and verse number two, when I call to you, God, answer me quickly. But listen to Psalm 18 and verse number six. The text there says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried to my God for help. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry for help before his ears came before my, my cry for help before him came into his ears. God hears you when you pray. God responds to you when you pray. God listens to you when you pray. So when you go through whatever you go through, an appropriate response is to go to God in prayer. So don't stop praying. Why? Because God hears your prayers. But then let me give you number two. Don't stop praying because prayer, number two, is the access point to the power of what God is giving us. Paul again reminds us in this text that the reason why we go to God in prayer is because God responds. He gives you exactly what you need to navigate through your issues. Remember, Paul says, for this cause, since the day I heard of it, I have not ceased to pray to God and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual 
spiritual understanding so that you might walk worthy. Look at the emphasis. When you and I go to God in prayer, God's requ Paul's request is that we be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Why? Because God wants us to be filled with a power that can move us beyond our moment. Remember, whatever fills you controls you. If you're filled with fear in this season, fear will control you. If you're fear with, filled with doubt in this season, doubt will control you. If you're filled with pessimism in this season, pessimism will control you. If you're filled with negativity, negativity will control you. Whatever fills you controls you. We ought to be then filled with an understanding of who God is and what God's will is. Why? Because being filled by him will fortify you. Be filled be fortified so that you can continue in whatever season you're in to be fruitful. Notice, Paul says that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and understanding so that you might walk worthy of the Lord, being fruitful in every good thing. God wants you, no matter what season you're in, to be fruitful. He wants you to be fruitful in a hot season, a dry season, a winter season, a wet season, whatever it is. Be fruitful. Why? Because if God is filling you, he will fortify you and bless you to be fruitful despite what you're going through. Can't you hear Psalm 1? Go back and read it when you get a chance. So don't stop praying because prayer is the access point for God's prayer, of God's power. But let me give you number three. Don't stop praying because it's an aim at God's praise. At the ending part of verse number 11, going into verse number 12, Paul says, joyfully giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Notice, when you and I pray then, our prayer is an opportunity to continue to acknowledge how good God is. Never ever forget that the reason why you can stand in whatever season that you're in is because you're grateful for who God is. God, the one who's holding everything together. God, the omni one, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, knows everything, is everywhere, has all power, is all good. That's your God. He's your shepherd as you go through the valley. He's your light in dark places. He's your strength when the world is shaking around you. God is your God. Be grateful to God, but then number two, be grateful for God's work in your life. What did he do? He delivered you from the power of darkness into the power or into the kingdom of his dear son. And that God is worthy of your praise. So when you go to him and give him love, don't forget to give God praise for being good to you. Give God praise for delivering you. Not only are you giving glory to God, grateful to God, grateful to God's work, but grateful to God's work in saving you, translating you from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom you have redemption. Never stop giving God glory for having redemption, for being saved, for being, being sanctified, and knowing that you're on your way to heaven no matter what happens to you. That's why you can have peace in the middle of a pandemic. That's why you can hold your head even when the color of your skin makes you an endangered species. You can continue to give God glory because you know there's nothing in this created world that can separate you from the love of God. I hear Romans chapter 8, neither height nor depth nor angel nor principality, things present, things to come, shall ever be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So I give thanks. You hear Paul, don't stop praying because it's appropriate in whatever season that you're in to deal with the problems that you have. Don't stop praying because it's your access point to get to the power of God. Don't stop praying because you're aiming it at praising God with everything that's in you. Don't stop praying as Paul teaches us. Let's talk to God even right now. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being our God. We praise you for helping us to be, to make it through another week in which you have kept us and strengthened us and fortified our every step. Thank you, Father, for allowing us in this season to know that we can come to you. It's appropriate for your children to speak to the Father. It's appropriate, Lord God, for us to call out Abba because we need you. And But Lord God, we thank you because we know anytime we call out on you, you hear us. You listen to our plea. You listen to our cries. You listen to 
to the hearts and the whimpers and the words that come from the mouth of your children. Thank you, Father, for leaning in. Thank you for not being so big that you don't hear our small voices. Thank you, Lord God, for being, being a mindful enough to hear the entire world, but intimate enough to listen to every one of us according to the detail of our lives. Lord God, we thank you so much for being the power that we need to make it through this moment and the next, for being our strength, for lifting us up through the week, Lord God, for lifting our heads when we're down, for being our encouragement, being our resolve, being the force behind us, the wind at our back, the ease of our step. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to make a way out of no way. Thank you for providing what we don't deserve. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you, Lord God, for being the one who heals, delivers, strengthens, and renews. And Lord God, we come to you right now praising you for being good to us, praising you primarily for our salvation that ensures that we are all right no matter what happens in this world. We ask, oh God, that you continue to heal, continue to strengthen, continue to renew, continue to restore, continue to deliver, continue to keep insulated the hearts and minds of people who need you. Bless those, Lord God, your people who are right now frustrated with life, frustrated in this season, who are holding their heads down and despondent. Give them a sense of joy. Help them Lord God to remember how how much you are a promise keeping God help us Lord God as we go through this to be together to be bound together by your power and your strength and your spirit and a reminder of your word that you will never leave us never forsake us never allow us to go through this season alone you are with us now you will be with us through the storm and we praise you bless you and acknowledge your name even right now God we love you we magnify your name and we bless you for being faithful to us. We ask that you continue to watch over us in the name of Jesus as we together say amen and amen. Listen, don't stop praying. It's appropriate for you to handle your problems. Don't stop praying because it's the access point to your power to make it through this season. And don't stop praying because your prayers are aimed at giving God praise and giving God glory. Keep on praying. Keep doing what God would have us to do as we traverse through this season into the next. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Everything is going to be alright. Though you're facing dark as night. Satan's strong, but God is stronger. So keep the faith and you got to keep pressing on. Everything is going to be Okay, God has promised He will make a way. God before us, who can destroy us? Stand tall, the victory is won. What can separate us from God's love? So tribulation on Israel, persecution, nakedness. Oh no.